Jalal ad Din Muhammad Rumi, Persian, also known as Jalal ad Din Muhammad Balki, Mevlana, Maulana, our master, Mevlevi, Maulawi, my master, and more popularly simply as Rumi, the 30th of September 1207 to the 17th of December 1273, was a 13th century Persian poet, faqih, Islamic scholar, theologian, and Sufi mystic originally from Greater Khorasan. Rumi's influence transcends national borders and ethnic divisions. Iranians, Tajiks, Turks, Greeks, Pashtuns, other Central Asian Muslims, and the Muslims of South Asia have greatly appreciated his spiritual legacy for the past seven centuries. His poems have been widely translated into many of the world's languages and transposed into various formats. Rumi has been described as the most popular poet and the Best selling poet. In the United States, Rumi's works are written mostly in Persian, but occasionally he also used Turkish, Arabic, and Greek in his verse. His Masnavi, Mathnawi, composed in Konya, is considered one of the greatest poems of the Persian language. His works are widely read today in their original language across Greater Iran and the Persian speaking world. Translations of his works are very popular, most notably in Turkey, Azerbaijan, the United States, and South Asia. His poetry has influenced not only Persian literature, but also the literary traditions of the Ottoman Turkish, Chagatai, Urdu and Pashto languages. Topic. Name He is most commonly called Rumi in English. His full name is Jalal ad Din Muhammad Balki, Persian, or Jalal ad Din Muhammad Rumi. Jalal ad Din is an Arabic name meaning, glory of the faith. Balki and Rumi are his nisbas, meaning, respectively, from Balk and from Rum, Roman, what European history now calls Byzantine, Anatolia. According to the authoritative Rumi biographer Franklin Lewis of the University of Chicago, T. He Anatolian peninsula which had belonged to the Byzantine, or Eastern Roman Empire, had only relatively recently been conquered by Muslims and even when it came to be controlled by Turkish Muslim rulers, it was still known to Arabs, Persians and Turks as the geographical area of Rum. As such, there are a number of historical personages born in or associated with Anatolia known as Rumi, a word borrowed from Arabic literally meaning Roman, in which context Roman refers to subjects of the Byzantine Empire or simply to people living in or things associated with Anatolia. He is widely known by the sobriquet Maulana, Molana Persian, Persian pronunciation, Maul N in Iran and popularly known as Mevlana in Turkey. Maulana is a term of Arabic origin, meaning, our master. The term Maulawi, Malavi Persian and Mevlevi Turkish, also of Arabic origin, meaning, my master, is also frequently used for him. Topic Life Topic Overview Rumi was born to native Persian speaking parents, originally from the Balkh, in present day Afghanistan. He was born either in Wash, a village on the Vash River in present-day Tajikistan, or in the city of Balkh, in present-day Afghanistan. Greater Balkh was at that time a major center of Persian culture and Sufism had developed there for several centuries. The most important influences upon Rumi, besides his father, were the Persian poets Attar and Sinai. Rumi expresses his appreciation. Atar was the spirit, Sinai his eyes twain, and in time thereafter, came we in their train." And mentions in another poem, "...Atar has traversed the seven cities of love, we are still at the turn of one street." His father was also connected to the spiritual lineage of Najm al-Din Kubra. Rumi lived most of his life under the Persianate Seljuk Sultanate of Rum, where he produced his works and died in 1273 AD. He was buried in Konya, and his shrine became a place of pilgrimage. 
Upon his death, his followers and his son Sultan Walad founded the Mevlevi Order, also known as the Order of the Whirling Dervishes, famous for the Sufi dance known as the Sama Ceremony. He was laid to rest beside his father, and over his remains a shrine was erected. A hagiographical account of him is described in Shams Ud Din Ahmad Aflaki's Manakib al Arifin, written between 1318 and 1353. This biography needs to be treated with care as it contains both legends and facts about Rumi. For example, Professor Franklin Lewis of the University of Chicago, author of the most complete biography on Rumi, has separate sections for the hagiographical biography of Rumi and the actual biography about him. Topic. Childhood and emigration Rumi's father was Baha Ud Din Walad, a theologian, jurist and a mystic from Balkh, who was also known by the followers of Rumi as Sultan al-Ulama or Sultan of the Scholars. The popular hagiographical assertions that have claimed the family's descent from the Caliph Abu Bakr does not hold on closer examination and is rejected by modern scholars. The claim of maternal descent from the Khwarezmashah for Rumi or his father is also seen as a non-historical hagiographical tradition designed to connect the family with royalty, but this claim is rejected for chronological and historical reasons. The most complete genealogy offered for the family stretches back to six or seven generations to famous Hanafi jurists. We do not learn the name of Baha al-Din's mother in the sources, only that he referred to her as Mami colloquial Persian for Mama, and that she was a simple woman who lived to the 1200s. The mother of Rumi was Mumina Khatan. The profession of the family for several generations was that of Islamic preachers of the liberal Hanafi rite, and this family tradition was continued by Rumi see his Fihi Ma Fih and Seven Sermons and Sultan Walad see Marif Waladi for examples of his everyday sermons and lectures. When the Mongols invaded Central Asia sometime between 1215 and 1220, Baha Ud Din Walad, with his whole family and a group of disciples, set out westwards. According to hagiographical account which is not agreed upon by all Rumi scholars, Rumi encountered one of the most famous mystic Persian poets, Attar, in the Iranian city of Nishapur, located in the province of Khorasan. Attar immediately recognized Rumi's spiritual eminence. He saw the father walking ahead of the son and said, Here comes a sea followed by an ocean. Attar gave the boy his Asranama, a book about the entanglement of the soul in the material world. This meeting had a deep impact on the 18-year-old Rumi and later on became the inspiration for his works. From Nishapur, Walad and his entourage set out for Baghdad, meeting many of the scholars and Sufis of the city. From Baghdad they went to Hejaz and performed the pilgrimage at Mecca. The migrating caravan then passed through Damascus, Malatya, Erzincan, Shivas, Kayseri and Nigda. They finally settled in Karaman for seven years, Rumi's mother and brother both died there. In 1225, Rumi married Gohar Khatan in Karaman. They had two sons, Sultan Walad and Allah Eddin Chalabi. When his wife died, Rumi married again and had a son, Amir Alim Chalabi, and a daughter, Malake Khatan. On 1 May 1228, most likely as a result of the insistent invitation of Allah Ud Din Ki Kobad, ruler of Anatolia, Baha Ud Din came and finally settled in Konya in Anatolia within the westernmost territories of the Seljuk Sultanate of Rum. Topic. Education and encounters with Shams e Tabrizi Baha Ud Din became the head of a madrasa religious school, and when he died, Rumi, aged 25, inherited his position as the Islamic Mulvi. One of Baha Ud Din's students, Sayyid Burhan Ud Din Muhakik Termezi, continued to train Rumi in the Sharia as well as the Tariqa, especially that of Rumi's father. For nine years, Rumi practiced Sufism as a disciple of Burhan Ud Din until the latter died in 1240 or 1241. 
Rumi's public life then began, he became an Islamic jurist, issuing fatwas and giving sermons in the mosques of Konya. He also served as a Mulvi Islamic teacher and taught his adherents in the madrasa. During this period, Rumi also travelled to Damascus and is said to have spent four years there. It was his meeting with the dervish Shams-e-Tabrizi on 15 November 1244 that completely changed his life. From an accomplished teacher and jurist, Rumi was transformed into an ascetic. Shams had travelled throughout the Middle East searching and praying for someone who could endure my company. A voice said to him, What will you give in return? Shams replied, My head. The voice then said, The one you seek is Jalal ud Din of Konya. On the night of 5 December 1248, as Rumi and Shams were talking, Shams was called to the back door. He went out, never to be seen again. It is rumored that Shams was murdered with the connivance of Rumi's son, Allah Ud Din. If so, Shams indeed gave his head for the privilege of mystical friendship, Rumi's love for, and his bereavement at the death of. Shams found their expression in an outpouring of lyric poems, Divan e Shams e Tabrizi. He himself went out searching for Shams and journeyed again to Damascus. There, he realized, Why should I seek? I am the same ash. His essence speaks through me. I have been looking for myself. Topic. Later life and death Mulana had been spontaneously composing ghazals Persian poems, and these had been collected in the Divan-i-Kabir or Dewan Shams Tabrizi. Rumi found another companion in Salah ud din e zarqab a goldsmith. After Salah ud din's death, Rumi's scribe and favorite student, Husam e Chalabi, assumed the role of Rumi's companion. One day, the two of them were wandering through the Maram vineyards outside Konya when Husam described to Rumi an idea he had had. If you were to write a book like the Ilahanama of Sinai or the Mantic ut of Atar, it would become the companion of many troubadours. They would fill their hearts from your work and compose music to accompany it. Rumi smiled and took out a piece of paper on which were written the opening 18 lines of his Masnavi, beginning with Listen to the reed and the tale it tells, how it sings of separation. Husam implored Rumi to write more. Rumi spent the next 12 years of his life in Anatolia dictating the six volumes of this masterwork, the Masnavi, to Husam. In December 1273, Rumi fell ill, he predicted his own death and composed the well-known Ghazal, which begins with the verse How doest thou know what sort of king I have within me as companion? Do not cast thy glance upon my golden face, for I have iron legs. Rumi died on 17 December 1273 in Konya. His death was mourned by the diverse community of Konya, with local Christians and Jews joining the crowd that converged to bid farewell as his body was carried through the city. Rumi's body was interred beside that of his father, and a splendid shrine, the Yesel Turb, Green Tomb, today the Mevlana Museum, was erected over his place of burial. His epitaph reads, When we are dead, seek not our tomb in the earth, but find it in the hearts of men. Georgian queen Gurku Hatun was a close friend of Rumi. She was the one who sponsored the construction of his tomb in Konya. The 13th century Mevlana Mausoleum, with its mosque, dance hall, schools and living quarters for dervishes, remains a destination of pilgrimage to this day, and is probably the most popular pilgrimage site to be regularly visited by adherents of every major religion. Topic. Teachings Like other mystic and Sufi poets of Persian literature, Rumi's poetry speaks of love which infuses the world. Rumi's teachings also express the tenets summarized in the Quranic verse which Shams e Tabrizi cited as the essence of prophetic guidance. Know that there is no God but He, and ask forgiveness for your sin. Q. 47 19. 
In the interpretation attributed to Shams, the first part of the verse commands the humanity to seek knowledge of Tawhid oneness of God, while the second instructs them to negate their own existence. In Rumi's terms, Tawhid is lived most fully through love, with the connection being made explicit in his verse that describes love as that flame which, when it blazes up, burns away everything except the everlasting beloved. Rumi's longing and desire to attain this ideal is evident in the following poem from his book The Masnavi. The Masnavi weaves fables, scenes from everyday life, Quranic revelations and exegesis, and metaphysics into a vast and intricate tapestry. Rumi believed passionately in the use of music, poetry and dance as a path for reaching God. For Rumi, music helped devotees to focus their whole being on the divine and to do this so intensely that the soul was both destroyed and resurrected. It was from these ideas that the practice of whirling dervishes developed into a ritual form. His teachings became the base for the order of the Mevlevi, which his son Sultan Walad organized. Rumi encouraged Sama, listening to music and turning or doing the sacred dance. In the Mevlevi tradition, Sam represents a mystical journey of spiritual ascent through mind and love to the perfect one. In this journey, the seeker symbolically turns towards the truth, grows through love, abandons the ego, finds the truth and arrives at the perfect. The seeker then returns from this spiritual journey, with greater maturity, to love and to be of service to the whole of creation without discrimination with regard to beliefs, races, classes, and nations. In other verses in the Masnavi, Rumi describes in detail the universal message of love. The lover's cause is separate from all other causes. Love is the astrolabe of God's mysteries. Rumi's favorite musical instrument was the ney, reed flute. Topic. Major works Rumi's poetry is often divided into various categories, the quatrains Rubaiyat, and odes Ghazal, of the Divan, the six books of the Masnavi. The prose works are divided into the discourses, the letters, and the seven sermons. Topic. Poetic works Rumi's best known work is the Matnawi e Manawi spiritual couplets. The six-volume poem holds a distinguished place within the rich tradition of Persian Sufi literature, and has been commonly called the Quran in Persian. Many commentators have regarded it as the greatest mystical poem in world literature. It contains approximately 27,000 lines, each consisting of a couplet with an internal rhyme. Rumi's other major work is the Dewan e Kabir, Great Work, or Dewan e Shams e Tabrizi, the works of Shams of Tabriz, named in honor of Rumi's master Shams. Besides approximately 35,000 Persian couplets and 2,000 Persian quatrains, the divan contains 90 ghazals and 19 quatrains in Arabic, a couple of dozen or so couplets in Turkish mainly macaronic poems of mixed Persian and Turkish and 14 couplets in Greek all of them in three macaronic poems of Greek Persian. Topic. Prose works. Fihi ma fihi in it what's in it, Persian, provides a record of 71 talks and lectures given by Rumi on various occasions to his disciples. It was compiled from the notes of his various disciples, so Rumi did not author the work directly. An English translation from the Persian was first published by A. J. Arbery as Discourses of Rumi New York, Samuel Weiser, 1972, and a translation of the second book by Wheeler Thaxton, Sign of the Unseen Putney, V.T., Threshold Books, 1994. The style of the Fihi Ma Fihi is colloquial and meant for middle-class men and women, and lack the sophisticated wordplay. Mahalas e Sabah, seven sessions, Persian, contains seven Persian sermons, as the name implies, or lectures given in seven different assemblies. The sermons themselves give a commentary on the deeper meaning of Quran and Hadith. The sermons also include quotations from poems of Sanai, Attar, and other poets, including Rumi himself. 
As Aflaki relates, after Shams e Tabrizi, Rumi gave sermons at the request of notables, especially Salah al Din Zarqab. The style of Persian is rather simple, but quotation of Arabic and knowledge of history and the hadith show Rumi's knowledge in the Islamic sciences. His style is typical of the genre of lectures given by Sufis and spiritual teachers. Makadab the letters Persian is the book containing Rumi's letters in Persian to his disciples, family members, and men of state and of influence. The letters testify that Rumi kept very busy helping family members and administering a community of disciples that had grown up around them. Unlike the Persian style of the previous two mentioned works, which are lectures and sermons, the letters are consciously sophisticated and epistolary in style, which is in conformity with the expectations of correspondence directed to nobles, statesmen, and kings. Topic: <inaudible> Religious outlook. Rumi belongs to the class of Islamic philosophers which include Ibn Arabi and Mullah Sadra. These transcendental philosophers are often studied together in traditional schools of Irfan, philosophy and theosophy throughout the Muslim world. Rumi embeds his theosophy, transcendental philosophy, like a string through the beads of his poems and stories. His main point and emphasis is the unity of being. It is undeniable that Rumi was a Muslim scholar and took Islam seriously. Nonetheless, the depth of his spiritual vision extended beyond narrow understanding sectarian concerns. One Rubayat reads, According to the Quran, Prophet Muhammad is a mercy sent by God to the Alameen to all creation, including humanity overall. In regards to this, Rumi states, the light of Muhammad does not abandon a Zoroastrian or Jew in the world. May the shade of his good fortune shine upon everyone. He brings all of those who are led astray into the way out of the desert." Rumi, however, asserts the supremacy of Islam by stating, the light of Muhammad has become a thousand branches of knowledge, a thousand, so that both this world and the next have been seized from end to end. If Muhammad rips the veil open from a single such branch, thousands of monks and priests will tear the string of false belief from around their waists." Many of Rumi's poems suggest the importance of outward religious observance and the primacy of the Quran. Flee to God's Quran, take refuge in it there with the spirits of the Prophet's merge. The book conveys the Prophet's circumstances. Those fish of the pure sea of majesty. Rumi states. Rumi also states. I sowed. My two eyes shut from desires for this world and the next, this I learned from Muhammad. On the first page of the Masnavi, Rumi states, Hada Katabu el Mathnawi wa huwa usulu usuli usuli d din wa kashafu el Quran. This is the book of the Masnavi, and it is the roots of the roots of the roots of the Islamic religion, and it is the explainer of the Quran. Sayyid Hossein Nasser states, one of the greatest living authorities on Rumi in Persia today, Hadi Hayri, has shown in an unpublished work that some 6,000 verses of the Diwan and the Mathnawi are practically direct translations of Quranic verses into Persian poetry. Rumi states in his Diwan, The Sufi is hanging on to Muhammad, like Abu Bakr. His Masnavi contains anecdotes and stories derived largely from the Quran and the Hadith, as well as everyday tales. Topic. Legacy Rumi's poetry forms the basis of much classical Iranian and Afghan music. Contemporary classical interpretations of his poetry are made by Muhammad Reza Shajarian, Sharam Nazari, Davud Azad the three from Iran and Ostad Muhammad Hashim Cheshti Afghanistan. To many modern Westerners, his teachings are one of the best introductions to the philosophy and practice of Sufism. 
In the West Sharam Shiva has been teaching, performing and sharing the translations of the poetry of Rumi for nearly 20 years and has been instrumental in spreading Rumi's legacy in the English-speaking parts of the world. Pakistan's national poet, Muhammad Iqbal, was also inspired by Rumi's works and considered him to be his spiritual leader, addressing him as P.I.R. Rumi. In his poems, the honorific P.I.R. literally means old man, but in the Sufi, mystic context it means founder, master, or guide. Sharam Shiva asserts that Rumi is able to verbalize the highly personal and often confusing world of personal growth and development in a very clear and direct fashion. He does not offend anyone, and he includes everyone. Today Rumi's poems can be heard in churches, synagogues, Zen monasteries, as well as in the downtown New York art, performance, music scene. According to Professor Majid M. Naini, Rumi's life and transformation provide true testimony and proof that people of all religions and backgrounds can live together in peace and harmony. Rumi's visions, words, and life teach us how to reach inner peace and happiness so we can finally stop the continual stream of hostility and hatred and achieve true global peace and harmony. Rumi's work has been translated into many of the world's languages, including Russian, German, Urdu, Turkish, Arabic, Bengali, French, Italian, and Spanish, and is being presented in a growing number of formats, including concerts, workshops, readings, dance performances, and other artistic creations. The English interpretations of Rumi's poetry by Coleman Barks have sold more than half a million copies worldwide, and Rumi is one of the most widely read poets in the United States. Sharam Shiva book, Rending the Veil, Literal and Poetic Translations of Rumi, 1995, Home Press is the recipient of the Benjamin Franklin Award. Recordings of Rumi poems have made it to the USA's Billboard's Top 20 list. A selection of American author Deepak Chopra's editing of the translations by Faridun Kia of Rumi's love poems has been performed by Hollywood personalities such as Madonna, Goldie Hawn, Philip Glass and Demi Moore. There is a famous landmark in northern India, known as Rumi Gate, situated in Lucknow, the capital of Uttar Pradesh, named for Rumi. Rumi and his mausoleum were depicted on the reverse of the 5,000 Turkish lira banknotes of 1981–1994. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Iranian world Say it in Persian although in Arabic sounds better. Love, however, has its own many other dialects. These cultural, historical and linguistic ties between Rumi and Iran have made Rumi an iconic Iranian poet, and some of the most important Rumi scholars including Forazanfer, Naini, Sabzwari, etc., have come from modern Iran. Rumi's poetry is displayed on the walls of many cities across Iran, sung in Persian music, and read in school books. Topic. Mulawi Sufi Order The Mulawi Sufi Order was founded in 1273 by Rumi's followers after his death. His first successor in the rectorship of the order was Husam Chalabi himself, after whose death in 1284 Rumi's younger and only surviving son, Sultan Walad died 1312, popularly known as author of the mystical Matnawi Rabobnama, or the Book of the Rabab was installed as Grand Master of the Order. The leadership of the order has been kept within Rumi's family in Konya uninterruptedly since then. The Mulawi Sufis, also known as whirling dervishes, believe in performing their dhikr in the form of Sama. During the time of Rumi, as attested in the Manakib ul Refin of Aflaki, his followers gathered for musical and turning practices. According to tradition, Rumi was himself a notable musician who played the robab, although his favorite instrument was the ney or reed flute. The music accompanying the Sam consists of settings of poems from the Matnawi and Dewan-e-Kabir, or of Sultan Walad's poems. 
The Malawiya was a well-established Sufi order in the Ottoman Empire, and many of the members of the order served in various official positions of the caliphate. The center for the Mevlevi was in Konya. There is also a Mulawi monastery, Darga, in Istanbul near the Galata Tower in which the Sam is performed and accessible to the public. The Mulawi order issues an invitation to people of all backgrounds. During Ottoman times, the Mevlevi produced a number of notable poets and musicians, including Sheikh Ghalib, Ismail Rusuhi Didi of Ankara, Esrar Didi, Halet Effendi, and Gavsi Didi, who are all buried at the Galata Mulawi Khana Turkish, Mevlevi Hain in Istanbul. Music, especially that of the Ney, plays an important part in the Mevlevi. With the foundation of the modern, secular Republic of Turkey, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk removed religion from the sphere of public policy and restricted it exclusively to that of personal morals, behavior and faith. On 13 December 1925, a law was passed closing all the tekkas dervish lodges and zawiyas chief dervish lodges, and the centers of veneration to which visits ziyaret were made. Istanbul alone had more than 250 tekkas as well as small centers for gatherings of various fraternities. This law dissolved the Sufi orders, prohibited the use of mystical names, titles and costumes pertaining to their titles, impounded the order's assets, and banned their ceremonies and meetings. The law also provided penalties for those who tried to re-establish the orders. Two years later, in 1927, the Mausoleum of Mevlana in Konya was allowed to reopen as a museum. In the 1950s, the Turkish government began allowing the whirling dervishes to perform once a year in Konya. The Mulana festival is held over two weeks in December, its culmination is on 17 December. The Ors of Mulana, anniversary of Rumi's death, called Sabe Eris, Persian meaning nuptial night, the night of Rumi's union with God. In 1974, the whirling dervishes were permitted to travel to the West for the first time. In 2005, UNESCO proclaimed the Mevlevi Sama Ceremony of Turkey as one of the masterpieces of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity. <laughs> Religious denomination As Edward G. Brown noted, the three most prominent mystical Persian poets Rumi, Sinai and Attar were all Sunni Muslims and their poetry abounds with praise for the first two caliphs Abu Bakr and Umar ibn al-Khattab. According to Anne-Marie Schimmel, the tendency among Shia authors to anachronistically include leading mystical poets such as Rumi and Attar among their own ranks, became stronger after the introduction of Twelver Shia as the state religion in the Safavid Empire in 1501. 800th Anniversary Celebrations In Afghanistan, Rumi is known as Maulana, in Turkey as Mevlana, and in Iran as Malavi. At the proposal of the permanent delegations of Afghanistan, Iran, and Turkey, and as approved by its executive board and general conference in conformity with its mission of constructing in the minds of men the defenses of peace, UNESCO was associated with the celebration, in 2007, of the 800th anniversary of Rumi's birth. The commemoration at UNESCO itself took place on the 6th of September 2007. UNESCO issued a medal in Rumi's name in the hope that it would prove an encouragement to those who are engaged in research on and dissemination of Rumi's ideas and ideals, which would in turn enhance the diffusion of the ideals of UNESCO. The Afghan Ministry of Culture and Youth established a national committee which organized an international seminar to celebrate the birth and life of the great ethical philosopher and world-renowned poet. This grand gathering of the intellectuals, diplomats, and followers of Mulana was held in Kabul and in Balkh, the Mulana's place of birth. On 30 September 2007, Iranian school bells were rung throughout the country in honor of Mulana. Also in that year, Iran held a Rumi week from 26 October to 2 November. An international ceremony and conference were held in Tehran. The event was opened by the Iranian president and the chairman of the Iranian parliament. 
Scholars from 29 countries attended the events, and 450 articles were presented at the conference. Iranian musician Sharam Nazeri was awarded the Légion d'honneur and Iran's House of Music Award in 2007 for his renowned works on Rumi masterpieces. 2007 was declared as the International Rumi Year by UNESCO. Also on 30 September 2007, Turkey celebrated Rumi's 800th birthday with a giant whirling dervish ritual performance of the Sam, which was televised using 48 cameras and broadcast live in eight countries. Ertugrul Gunne, of the Ministry of Culture and Tourism, stated, 300 dervishes are scheduled to take part in this ritual, making it the largest performance of Sema in history. Maulana Rumi Review The Maulana Rumi Review ISSN is published annually by the Center for Persian and Iranian Studies at the University of Exeter in collaboration with the Rumi Institute in Nicosia, Cyprus, and Archetype Books in Cambridge. The first volume was published in 2010, and it has come out annually since then. According to the principal editor of the journal, Leonard Lewison, although a number of major Islamic poets easily rival the likes of Dante, Shakespeare and Milton in importance and output, they still enjoy only a marginal literary fame in the West because the works of Arabic and Persian thinkers, writers and poets are considered as negligible, frivolous, tawdry sideshows beside the grand narrative of the Western canon. It is the aim of the Maulana Rumi Review to redress this carelessly inattentive approach to world literature, which is something far more serious than a minor faux pas committed by the Western literary imagination. Topic. See also Blind Men and an Elephant San Mat Symphony No. 3. Shimonovsky on Persian culture Rumi scholars and writers English translators of Rumi poetry Interpreters of Rumikolman Barks Shoray Movanian Sharam Shiva Omer Taran